Hi, welcome to this video. Did you ever wonder how to approach a problem? Did you wonder what solution strategies you can use to solve a problem? Well, in the series of solution strategies, you will learn how to approach a problem. You will learn a few solution strategies that can be used to solve problems. This video consists of two parts. In this part, you will learn how to approach a problem. You will learn the solution strategies guess and check, go through all the possibilities and divide the problem into sub-problems. In the videos, I will use simple problems as an example to explain the solution strategies. So it makes sense to pause the video at the problems to try the problems yourself first. In that way, you will gain insight and develop problem solving skills. So let's start. As you might know, there are various strategies to solve everyday problems. Often, a problem can be solved in different ways, and there is not always a best way to solve problems. However, sometimes one way is more efficient than the other, or you might find one approach easier or more pleasant than the other. Consider for example the following problem. This problem is about the tennis club that has financial problems. The fans of this tennis club want to support the club with money. So each person donates an amount of money. The first person donates one euro. The second one donates two euro and so on. Now the question is how much money do the fans donate together? To solve this problem, we could sum up all the donated euros of the 100 members. Well, this is an easy solution to solve the problem, right? But it is a time-consuming solution. Besides that, it is not an efficient solution. And what if we would have 1,000 members or maybe 1 million members instead of 100 members? Would you still use the same solution strategy? Well, I don't think so. I think it is obvious that we should look for another solution strategy to solve this problem more efficiently. To find out what the proper solution strategy is, we need to know how we should approach a problem. To solve a problem, we can use the following steps. The first step in approaching the problem is to have a good understanding of the problem. This means, can we reformulate the problem? Do we understand the problem properly? Do we know what we have to solve? Have we seen such a problem before? Which information does the problem provide us? And what information do we need to solve the problem? In the second step, we choose a solution strategy to solve the problem in the third step. Sometimes we have to combine a few solution strategies to solve the problem. The fourth step is to check whether the solution strategy worked or not to solve the problem. If the strategy didn't work, then we have to go back to step two and choose another solution strategy to solve the problem. If we think that we have found the solution, then we should check the solution in the last step. We might, for example, make miscalculations or fallacies. Sometimes we cannot check the solution. In those cases, we should check whether the solution we found is reasonable or not. Now let us discuss some solution strategies. For the series of solution strategies, I have selected a few solution strategies, which are used quite often to solve problems. So this list is far from complete. In the series of solution strategies, we will discuss the following solution strategies. The guess and check, also known as the try something solution strategy, go to all the possibilities, divide the problem into several sub-problems, the use of formulas and equations, discover a structure or pattern, make a model, the brute force and the divide and conquer strategy. Now pause the video for a moment 
and write down at least one more solution strategy for yourself. I hope you have been able to come up with some more solution strategies. For example, you could think of making a diagram or creating a table or reasoning back. Okay, let's start with the first solution strategy in the list. The first solution strategy in the list is called try something strategy. This solution strategy is also known as the guess and check solution strategy. Now consider the following problem. Suppose you have an amount of money. Let's say you have 5 euro and 20 euro cents in coins of 5 cents and 20 cents. And you have three times as many coins of 20 cents as 5 cents. Now the question is, how many coins do you have? Well, to solve this simple problem, we will follow the scheme how to approach a problem, which we have seen earlier. I would suggest that you pause the video now for a moment and try to solve the problem with the guess and check solution strategy. Also, try to follow the scheme that we have discussed earlier to solve a problem. Well, I hope you have been able to solve this simple problem with the guess and check solution strategy. Now I will show you how you should have solved the problem with the guess and check solution strategy. The guess and check solution strategy tells us that we should try something. So let's try something. Let me start with 10 coins of 5 cents. Then we need 30 coins of 20 cents as we have 3 times as many coins of 20 cents as 5 cents. When we calculate the amount of money, we see that we have too much money when we try 10 coins of 5 cents. This is 6 euro and 50 cents. So now we go back to step 2 of the problem solving scheme. Probably we should try less than 10 coins of 5 cents. Let's say we try now 9 coins. Now we need 27 coins of 20 cents. And when we calculate the amount of money, we see that we still have too much money. This is 5 euro and 85 euro cents. We go back again to step two of the scheme. Now we should try less than nine coins of five cents. Let's say we try eight coins of five euro cents. And then we calculate the amount of money. Now we see that the total is five euro and 20 euro cents. This is the amount of money that we have in the problem. Now we should calculate the number of coins, which is eight coins of five cents and 24 coins of 20 cents, which sums up to a total of 32 coins. So the answer to the question is 32 coins. This is the fourth step of the scheme. The last step of the scheme is the step in which we do the check. We illustrate that here explicitly. So with this step, we have gone through all the steps of the problem solving scheme. Note that we have implicitly assumed that we understood the problem. This is because the problem was very clear in the simple example. In practice, you will notice that the first two steps are often completed in concert. Now let's consider the strategy, go through all the possibilities. You can use this strategy if there are not so many possibilities to solve a problem. If, for example, there are four possibilities, then you can easily try all the possibilities to solve a problem. So the go through all the possibilities is only suitable if the number of possibilities is limited. Now consider the following problem. In this problem, we want to measure exactly 50 minutes with two hourglasses. And we want to do this without the waste of time. Now the question is, how can we measure exactly 50 minutes using the two hourglasses, assuming that you can flip them without the waste of time? Note that this is the first step of the problem solving scheme to solve a problem. 
as we are trying to understand the problem. We comply with step 2 of the scheme as we already have decided to solve this problem with the go through all the possibility strategy. Now pause the video for a moment and try to solve the problem with the go through all the possibilities solution strategy. Also, try to follow the scheme that we have discussed earlier to solve a problem. I hope you have been able to solve the problem. Now I will show you how you should have solved the problem with the go through all the possibilities strategy. The third step of the problem solving scheme is a step of solving the problem with the chosen solution strategy, which is in our case the go through all the possibilities. The first possibility to solve the problem is to turn both our glasses one by one and to measure the time. When we do that, we measure 80 minutes, which is too much. The second possibility is to turn the hour glasses of seven minutes two times. Then we have a shortage of one minute. The third possibility is to turn both hour glasses at the same time. Then, when the hourglass of 7 minutes has finished, we turn the hourglass of 7 minutes instantly again. And after 4 minutes, the hourglass of 11 minutes will finish. This will give us 11 minutes. But this is not enough. The fourth possibility is an extension of the third possibility. So we turn both hourglasses simultaneously. We turn the hourglass of 7 minutes when this has finished. So we measure now 7 minutes. 4 minutes later, the hourglass of 11 minutes is ready. Now we measure 4 minutes. Together with the previous 7 minutes, we have measured now 11 minutes. At the same time, we turn the hourglass of 7 minutes. So this will finish 4 minutes later as we turn this after 4 minutes. With this 4 minutes, we end up with 50 minutes, which is what we have to measure. Note that with this check, we comply with the last check of the problem solving scheme. The third solution strategy in the list is the divide the problem into several sub-problems or steps. Sometimes a problem looks complex, but when you divide the problem into sub-problems, you may solve the problem easily. So now let's consider this solution strategy in more detail. To solve a problem by dividing the problem into sub-problems, you can use several approaches, like simplifying the problem, or back reasoning or by exclusion. By combining a few of these approaches, the complex problem will be clear and hence solvable. Consider the following example. In this example, a person named Alex has a number in mind. He subtracts 99 from this number and he multiplies the result by 55. The final result of the calculation is an odd number. And the question is, has Alex an odd number or an even number in mind? Now pause the video for a moment and try to solve the problem by dividing the problem into several sub-problems. Also, try to follow the scheme that we discussed earlier to solve a problem. I hope you have been able to solve this problem. Now let's discuss how you should have solved this problem. To solve this problem, we cannot go through all the possibilities. There are simply too much possibilities. So perhaps it is adequate to start with an even or an odd number. To solve this problem with the divide the problem into several sub-problem strategy, we approach the problem by simplifying the problem. Let's say we start, for example, with 100. We subtract 99 from 100 and multiply the result with 55. It seems that starting with an even number, in our example 100, 
results in an odd number which is 55. Now let's see what the result is when we start with an odd number. Let's say we start with 101. We subtract 99 from this number and we multiply with 55. Now we see that when we start with an odd number, in our example 101, we end up with an even number which is 110. The results we obtained now are specific for this example with the numbers 100 and 101. We would like a general solution which is valid for all the numbers that Alex could possibly have in mind. To make the solution valid for all the numbers that Alex could possibly have in mind, we should reason as follows. Suppose you start with an even number and you subtract 99 from it and then multiply the result with 55. You end up then with an odd number. But when you start with an odd number and you subtract 99 from it and then multiply the result with 55, then you end up with an even number. In the last step of the problem solving scheme, we should check if this general solution is indeed valid for all the numbers. To do so, we should take a few numbers and check if the general solution which we have found is valid. If let's say we have checked this for five numbers and the solution is valid for all the five numbers or 10 numbers, we could say that the general solution is valid for all the numbers. And then with back reasoning, you can draw the conclusion that the solution for the problem is that Alex had an even number in mind as the result of the calculation was an odd number. In this example, we solve this problem by combining two approaches, namely by simplifying the problem and by back reasoning. For now, the check to try a few numbers for this simple problem is sufficient. In the next video, we will prove mathematically that an odd number times an odd number results in an odd number, and that an even number minus an odd number results in an odd number. To wrap it up, in this part of the series of solution strategies, we have discussed the scheme to approach a problem, and we have applied the solution strategies guess and check, go through all the possibilities, and divide the problem into sub-problems. In the second part of the series of solution strategies, we will discuss the use of formulas, discover a structure, make a model, the brute force, and the divide and conquer solution strategies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.